From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Joe McNabb, Northeast Indemnity, Johnny. Oh, hi, Joe. What's up? At the moment, my blood pressure. Too much work? No. Prospect of having to pay off on a $100,000 life insurance policy. Uh Uh-oh. Fella, I think you know, Johnny. Art Wesley. Oh, sure. Been a pal of mine for years. Reporter. Yeah. Apparently, he's working on a story right now that somebody doesn't want him to report. What do you mean? Night before last, he got beat up in an alley. Yesterday, a car made a pass at him at high speed. What about today? It's early yet, Johnny. Oh, yeah, sure. But let's hope it's not too late. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office, Northeast Indemnity Affiliates, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Big Scoop matter. Expense account item one, $18.40. Transportation and incidentals to New York City. I called Art Wesley's paper. He wasn't in and nobody seemed to know where he was. Then I remembered a small bar called Tony's over on 3rd Avenue. I took a cab, that's item two, a dollar and a quarter, and found him in a corner booth. Sorry, Johnny, no bodyguard. The informants I'm working with will take off fast if they spotted one. No informants, no story. That insurance policy your paper took out on you, who's the beneficiary? A dear departed wife, Joan. Departed? I thought... We split up a couple of months ago. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, I yeah, We were living in two different worlds. I wanted a home and family. She wanted a trip to the moon every night. Where is she now? Who knows? On her way to the moon, I guess. Hey, look, this story you're working on, aren't you? It's hot, Johnny. And big, real big. A national gambling syndicate. And run by a guy right here in New York. Who? I'm getting close, but I'm not sure yet. When I am, then out come my articles. What's this guy going to do when you push him into a corner? Look, I'm worried about you. You look, Johnny, I'm not as foolish as you think. I've got his name written down and put in a safe deposit box with what evidence I got. That's my real insurance. Oh, all right, look, we've been friends a long time. I'm not going to let you do this alone. Sorry, Johnny. I've got to go it alone. Since I'd gotten nowhere with Art, I decided to try his wife, Joan, even though they were separated. I found her in an apartment on East 68th, but she was hardly what you'd call cooperative. Look, Mr. Dollar, so you're a friend of Art's. At the moment, I'm not. Mrs. Wesley, your marriage with Art is none of my business. But that insurance policy his paper took out on him is. And incidentally, you're still a beneficiary. So? So he could be in danger, those articles he's writing... Why doesn't he drop it? Oh, look, you know Art better than that. Then what am I supposed to do about it? That story is his business. How I feel about things is my business. And come to think of it, I can't see that either of those things is your business. Item three, a dollar eighty cab fare to police headquarters in the office of my old friend, Detective Lieutenant Rastelli. Sure, sure, I know about those attempts on Art's life. So I talked to him and got nowhere. He told me the stories about a national gambling syndicate. It's more than he told me. Supposedly the big boss is here in New York. Now, what are you going to do about it? Look, the minute Art quits thinking he's got to hit the jackpot all by himself and lets us in on it, we'll give him all the protection he... Lieutenant Rustelli. Yeah, yeah, just a minute. It's for you, Johnny. Oh, thanks. Hello? Art Wesley, Johnny. They told me at your hotel where to reach you. Anything new, Art? I'm leaving town for a few hours. This could be it, Johnny. Tonight could be the jackpot. Well, listen, let me go with you. Sorry, I gotta go alone. It's part of the deal. Art, it could be a trap. I can take care of myself. Call me when I get back. Wish me luck. Well, wait. Art! Art! (laughs) Item four, a dollar eighty cab to Art's apartment, where I persuaded the manager to let me in. I was looking for anything that would give me a lead. Then, near the phone on a scratch pad, I found where he'd written the word Watika several times. Sure, Lake Watika, upstate. Art had a lodge there. Item five, $25 even for a rented car. It was a three-hour drive to Lake Watika, which was bad enough. But to top it off, it started to rain, and rain hard. (laughs) 
When I finally got to the highway turnoff, the side road of the lake was a mass of mud. Then I got two quick breaks. It stopped raining, and I spotted the six-mile road into Art's place. Half an hour further on, I saw a light. Hart's car was parked at one side, and the front door of the lodge was wide open. When I got to it, I saw why. Hart was lying in the doorway. Yeah. He was the one who wanted to hit the jackpot. But you can't hit the jackpot with a slug, particularly when that slug is right between your eyes. I drove to the sheriff's office and reported it. Sheriff Tompkins and his boys took over. But in the darkness and the mud, they could only make a routine check. He asked me to meet him at the lodge the next morning, so I did. Uh, uh, Buddy was right here in the doorway, huh, son? Yeah, Sheriff, I didn't move it. And uh, Wesley probably got shot when he answered the door by somebody standing out there on the ground. Because of that bullet hole in the roof? Yeah, Right over that shelf that's stocked with canned goods, sugar, salt, and the like. Apparently, he used this place regular. Yeah, he used to do some of his writing here. Were you able to determine time of death? Coroner says between 10.30 and 11 last night. Uh, what time did you arrive? About half an hour after the rain stopped. I'd say quarter to 12. Means it was uh, still raining a good half hour after the killing. Eh, no wonder we found no tracks. Hey, look, Sheriff... I was working on a hot story about a national gambling syndicate. Could be that he found out who the boss was last night, the hard way. Oh? Then uh, you think the killer was from out of town, maybe New York? Yeah. Yeah. Now, where would he stay? Is there a hotel around here? Lake Watika Inn, just outside the village, about six miles from here. Sheriff, I'll check it out. Guests here at the inn, Mr. Dollar? Well, we have only two who checked in yesterday. It's the off-season, of course. Yeah, clerk, who are they? Well, uh, Mr. Cooper yesterday afternoon and a Mr. Buckley around dark. Uh Uh-huh. Are they still here? Mr. Cooper is sitting right out there on the terrace, but uh, Mr. Buckley paid in advance and left quite early this morning. I see. Did Buckley give any reason for stopping here? He said he was a traveling man and didn't like to drive in the rain. (laughs) Okay, okay. I'd like you to write down a description of him. I'll pick it up on the way out. Oh, I'll be glad to, sir. Hi. Oh, good morning. Enjoying the scenery? Yes, immensely. Oh, sit down, won't you? Sure, thanks. My name's Dollar. Mine's Cooper. You just check in? I'll just drop by. Uh, I came yesterday. Uh Uh-huh. Pretty up here this time of year. Yes. Yes, certainly is. I I really enjoy places like this in the off-season. It's a nice change. Too bad the weather hasn't been better, huh? The rainstorm last night? (laughs) Oh, I enjoyed that, too. You were out in it? Oh, no. (laughs) No. No, I enjoyed it the way a storm should be enjoyed. In front of the fireplace in my cottage with a drink and a good book. No, Mr. Dollar, I stayed in last night. And that was that. I picked up the description of the other guest, Buckley, from the clerk and gave it to Sheriff Tompkins, who got out a bullet in him. Then I drove back to New York City, turned in my rented car, and took a cab. That's item six, a dollar seventy, to Joan Wesley's apartment. Yes. They notified me this morning about Art's death. I don't know what to say. What is there to say? (laughs) Good question, Mrs. Wesley. If only he hadn't been so stubborn. If only he'd given up that story about the gambling syndicate or whatever it was. Yeah. You, uh, you figure somebody in the syndicate killed him? Why, of course. Mrs. Wesley, did you know Art had gone on up to the lodge at Lake Watika? No. Mr. Dollar, I'm rather tired. One more thing. Did you go out last night? No. It was raining. I stayed here in the apartment. All evening? All evening. I see. Well, thanks, Mrs. Wesley. Maybe I was imagining, but it seemed to me Joan Wesley hesitated just a little before telling me she hadn't been out of her apartment last night. And if she had gone to Lake Watika, I checked the basement garage. Her car was clean. Too clean. 
Item seven, five dollars to the garage attendant for some very interesting information. Joan Wesley had ordered her car washed first thing this morning. Why? Because the wheels were covered with mud from last night. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in just a moment. Better schools mean better citizens, better neighbors, better families. But we can't expect our children to respond, to learn and grow, if we ourselves are indifferent to their school environment. CBS Radio urges that you write to Better Schools, 9 East 40th Street, New York 60, New York, for information about how citizens can spark community action to improve their schools. That address again is Better Schools, 9 East 40th Street, New York 16, New York. Now, Act Two of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar and the Big Scoop Matter. I tell you, I didn't leave this apartment last night. Your car says differently, Joan. Car. You had it washed today because it was all muddy. And the reason it was muddy was because you had it out in the rain last night. Look, Another I... thing. You told me you didn't know Art had gone to the lodge. You hadn't heard from him. But the switchboard operator told me you had a call from him yesterday. Now, why else would he call you except to tell you where he was going? Well, how about it, Joan? All right. Art did call me yesterday and told me he was going to Lake Watika. And how about last night? Yes. I went out, but not to Lake Watika. Art wouldn't give you a divorce. By killing him, you get your freedom and 100,000 bucks. I didn't kill Art. I didn't go up there last night. And where did you go? Might as well know. The reason I wanted a divorce from Art was because I'd found someone else. Oh? That's where I went for a few minutes last evening. Why did you lie about the phone call from Art yesterday? I don't know. I don't know. I was confused. I was... I was afraid it would look bad for me if it came out that I knew Art had gone up there. It doesn't look good for you this way, believe me. Oh, Johnny, I'm telling the truth. Who is this fellow you're interested in? I don't see why he Who is he? To... His name is Ted Nash. Will you... will you have to talk to him? I sure will. And right now. But I was wrong about talking to Ted Nash right now. I called his apartment and got no answer. Item 9, sixty cab fare to police headquarters in the office of Detective Lieutenant Rostelli. You figure this guy Nash and Joan Wesley could have killed Art and used a gambling syndicate threat as a cover, huh? It's a possibility, Lieutenant. Well, I'll see what I can find out about Nash. How'd you do at Lake Watika? Two guests checked in the day of the killing. One, a man named Buckley. He left early this morning. Sheriff Tompkins has a bullet knot on him. Who else? A fellow named Cooper, who apparently likes to go places in the off-season. Nothing to tie him in particularly. Cooper, huh? We had a rumble some time ago that a guy named Cooper was involved in that gambling syndicate. What? The trouble is, we got no proof. Hey, wait a minute. What's the matter? Art told me he'd put the name of the man he was after in a safe deposit box. If we could find the key to that box. How about Art's apartment? Let's take a look. So we looked, and we found the key, tucked away in a desk, but only a number on it. Nothing to tell where it was located. I gave it to Lieutenant Rostelli, and he promised to check every bank in town if necessary. While I went on back to Lake Watika to see if the man named Cooper at the inn was the same one Rostelli told me about. When I got there, after a frantic three-hour drive, I found him comfortably sitting by the fireplace. Well, uh, Mr. Dollar, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Cooper, I want to get right to the point. You told me you came up here to enjoy the scenery. Yes, that's right. Why? The man who was killed last night, Art Wesley, he was trying to expose a national gambling syndicate. Oh, that's very interesting. So? So, I know a police detective in New York who thinks you're a member of that syndicate. Well, now, Mr. Dollar, that's a very serious charge. I presume you have proof. Well? Uh-huh. No proof. Well, in that case, I don't Mr. think there's Dollar, any... Uh, long distance call for you. You can take it on that phone right beside you. Thanks, clerk. Johnny Dollar. Rostelli in New York, Johnny. Hi, Lieutenant. Did you locate that... Yeah, the safe deposit box. And in it, we found the name of the man Art Wesley was closing in on. It's Cooper. Thanks very right, much. So you... Well, Cooper, 
You want a proof? We've got it. Evidence that ties you in with the syndicate clerk. Well, now, this is ridiculous. Is Dollar, it? This... Let me tell you the facts about this is, thing. Is, is something the matter, Mr. Dollar? Get Sheriff Tompkins on the phone, clerk. Tell him I've got Art Wesley's killer here. You mean Mr. Cooper? Oh, now, wait a minute. Now, look, Dollar... If you'd get your facts straight, you'd drop this silly notion of yours. What kind of facts, Cooper? What time was Wesley killed? Between 10.30 and 11 last night. But, Mr. Dollar, Mr. Wesley's place is some six miles from here. That's right. Why? Well, then Mr. Cooper couldn't have killed him. What do you mean? Last night, I took a drink to Mr. Cooper's cottage here at the inn. What time? Around 20 to 11, and I chatted with him for at least 15 minutes. Are you sure about that? Oh, quite sure. Well, Mr. Dollar, I'll buy you a drink sometime. Cooper strolled back to the bar with a satisfied smirk on his face. So the one man who had to be Art's killer couldn't have killed him. I called the clerk again and had him repeat his story in detail. If you recall, it rained heavily last night, Mr. Dollar. Yes, yes, I drove through it on my way up here. Well, I was making the rounds of the inn, checking windows, things like that, when the house phone rang. It was Mr. Cooper calling from his cottage. He wanted a drink. You say that was at 20 to 11? Uh, yes, I always jot down the time when I am called away from the desk. All right, go on, go on. Well, when I got to Mr. Cooper's cottage, he was sitting in the living room in front of the fire with a book. Yeah. We chatted a while, and then when I returned here to the desk, I jotted down the time again. 10.55. Well, that does it. What do you mean? Oh, it's a good 20-minute drive from here to Art Wesley's lodge. If he was killed between 10.30 and 11, and Cooper was here at that time, he, he couldn't have done it. Well, I'm sorry, but facts are facts. And, oh, excuse me. Lake Watika Inn. Uh, yes, just a moment. Sheriff Tompkins, Mr. Dollar. Oh, thanks. Hi, Sheriff. Thought you ought to know, son. Remember that man Buckley we were looking for? Yeah, sure, the other guest at the inn. Yeah, we picked him up. I've been questioning him for an hour. Any luck? No, sir. He's just a traveling salesman who stayed at the inn because he didn't want to drive in the rain. You sure? Buckley swears he doesn't even know Cooper. Just between you and me, Johnny... I think we got the wrong fella. No place again. I decided to start all over. Got into my car and drove to Art Wesley's place. Nothing was changed. I remember the trip I'd made the night he was killed, how it rained heavily until about half an hour before I arrived. How I'd found him lying in the open doorway, a bullet hole in his head. Yeah, and the hole in the ceiling over the shelf of provisions, marking the path of the bullet. It was there, so were the provisions. Canned food, mustard, sugar, a package of crackers. There was some... Wait a minute. Sugar. The sugar bowl. I stared at it for a moment. I remembered a couple of things the room clerk at the inn had told me. And suddenly the whole deal slid neatly and quietly into place. I drove back to the inn fast. Cooper's cottage was empty, so I went inside to the bedroom and took a look around. Then I spotted one of the pictures on the wall, a little out of place. I looked behind it. Yeah, just what I expected. Outside, I found Cooper sitting on the terrace in front of the main building. I slid into a chair across from him. Well, Mr. Dollar, what fantastic crime are you going to accuse me of today? Cooper, I got a one-track mind, and it's still stuck on murder. Oh, now, look. Dollar, we've been over this before, and personally, I, I find it quite boring. So much so that it's interfering with my vacation here. That's too bad. Yes, it is. So I'm leaving this evening. I don't think so, Cooper. Oh, come now. That Art Wesley no... was trying to expose a figure in a gambling syndicate. You. Well, that's a matter of conjecture. You had to stop him for keeps. Oh, now, look, Dollar. The time of Art Wesley's death has been established as between 10.30 and 11 last night. That's right, between 10.30 and 11 last night. And I'm sure you remember the room clerk telling you he was with me in my cottage living room from 10.40 to 10.55. I sure do. So that I certainly couldn't have killed your friend Wesley six miles from here during that time. Except that Art Wesley wasn't killed at his lodge. What are you talking about? You see, I remembered something else the clerk had told me. The night of the killing had stopped raining a little after 11.00. All right, what difference does that make? All the difference in the world, believe me. Here's what really happened, Cooper. 
You killed Art Wesley in the bedroom of your cottage here at the inn. Oh, don't be dreaming. You immediately called the room clerk over and chatted with him in your living room for about 15 minutes. He didn't know there was a corpse in the next room. Oh, really? After he left, you took Wesley's body the six miles to his place and planted it in the doorway. And I looked, Doctor. Your problem was to make it look like he'd been killed there. Then you remembered. The slug that had killed him hit the wall in your bedroom. That gave you an idea. You figured out the right angle at the lodge and fired a shot upwards from the outside the door. It went through the ceiling at the back. All right, Dollar, I've had enough of your half-baked theories with no proof whatsoever to back them up. Correction, Cooper, this time I've got proof. There was a shelf of food under the bullet hole and a bowl of sugar directly under it. A bowl of... So what? When sugar gets wet, it gets crusty and it stays that way. But the sugar in that bowl was dry. Now, if the killing was between 10.30 and 11 and it rained heavily until after 11, then some rain would have dropped through the bullet hole into the sugar. I see. But, Cooper, the sugar was dry. So the bullet hole was made after the time of the murder when you planted Wesley's body there. Just a little detail, Cooper, but it nails you. That and, of course, the fact I found the slug that really killed Wesley just a couple of minutes ago. Oh. Buried in the wall of your bedroom behind a picture, you'd move slightly to cover it. Well, Dollar, I may as well tell you that I saw you come out of my cottage a few minutes ago. I figured you knew... So ever since you sat down here, I've been holding a gun on you under the table. You know, Cooper, I may as well tell you. Ever since I sat down here, I've been holding a gun on you, too. Well, you... Let's have it. Well, you... You didn't have any gun. A big-time gambler bluffed right out of the game. Cooper, you're slipping. Item 10, 3750. Transportation and incidentals back to Hartford. Expense account total $187.40. Remarks? Cooper's awaiting trial. About Art Wesley? Well, I guess that sugar bowl was a dead man's revenge. And come to think of it, that revenge was pretty sweet. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. In days long since gone by, one had to go out in search of daring do. But in a fast-moving world, exciting things are happening right around the clock. Things you can be in on no matter what else you're doing, as long as your radio is nearby. With CBS Newsmen on the job, you can make CBS Radio your listening post for world events. Stay tuned now for five minutes of CBS News to be followed over most of these same stations by the FBI in Peace and War. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, colorful New Orleans, from nightlife in the Latin Quarter to the dismal, deadly swamps. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in tonight's cast were Virginia Gregg, Russell Thorson, Barney Phillips... Stacey Harris, Larry Thor, Parley Bear, and Les Tremaine. Musical supervision is by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Dan Coverly speaking.